You're going to feel like a black hole and you're just going to keep eating. Don't do this. What is up everyone? Today we're gonna to be talking about how to reverse out of a show properly. So just a little brief background, I just competed this past weekend, so now is a perfect time for me to talk about reversing. Most of us out there, after we're done with our show, we're gonna be like, heck yes, let's binge eat. So you go out, you get your cheesecake, you get your sushi, you get your burger and fries, you get your pizza, yes, you get all of them, and next thing you know, you wake up super bloated, but that's okay because you're ghrelin, so your hormone that makes you hungry is through the roof. So what do you do? You rinse and repeat, boom, more pizza, more sushi, more burger and fries, more cheesecake. Don't forget about your donuts. Maybe those Cleveland brownies, maybe those super high cookies, you know? All of the above. You guys have gone ham for the last 48 hours. Is it going to kill you? Absolutely not. Is your inflammatory markers through the roof right now? 110% it's through the roof. Doesn't matter who you are. How do we fix this issue? What is the best way to reverse? What should you have done coming out of the show? This is what I usually use with my clients as well as myself. Congratulations, you just finished competing. The first thing you need to do when you get off stage is start drinking some water. You probably reduce down your water intake going into the show. And what does that mean? Your body needs water now. It also makes it very hard to mobilize the food through the gut and other things. Your blood pressure may be a little bit higher. So the first thing you need to do is be jamming some water. I know a lot of people out there, they take their diuretics and they completely cut off their water and they do X, Y, and Z. I think that is a disaster waiting to happen, not only for your health, but as well for your physique. That being said, let's get some water back in our system, as well as sodium. Now, the issue with sodium is again, going to be going back to those foods that we just talked about. With with the water and our body wanting to overcompensate, trying to get that water back in our system, we are just going to soak. So make sure that there is a steady trickle effect of the water coming into your body, instead of just downing a gallon of water and all of a sudden your body's like, oh, water, and it just starts like holding all this water. And then you have a burger and fries and sodium from the sushi because you're dipping that in soy sauce. And then you're having cheesecake, and which is high in fat as well as high in sugar. And then all of a sudden you get this disaster of your body wanting to soak all these nutrients and having a hard time mobilizing the nutrients, then getting a bunch of water in your system, and then all of a sudden you just feel like a puffer fish and you're super inflamed. So usually what I recommend coming out of the show is the one, the water, and keep that water intake up and keep it steady. Then have that free meal, you know? You can have two free meals. Don't go ham on a bunch of sweets. That's where I see people really go wrong is they eat like 4,000 to 5,000 calories in sugar. Well, guess what? You're probably going to get inflamed from that anyways just because of the massive sugar intake. Then on top of it, there's a massive amount of fat in those sweets too that you're probably eating. So just be very cognizantly aware of your food choices coming out of the show. Your body is not used to that. Your body has not been intaking that many calories in sometimes the entire week and you're doing that in one serving or two servings. If you want your burger and fries, get your burger and fries. If you want to get like a piece of cake or a piece of a brownie or a cookie, you know, something this mild. And then I'd probably eat a cleaner meal after that. You can still eat out if you want to, get like a poke bowl or something like that. So therefore you get that satisfaction of craving that food for such a long period of time and you're not binge eating now. The next day, you are going to be very hungry. And why is that? Because now you have given yourself a surplus of calories and your ghrelin is now through the roof, which is again, that hunger hormone signaling for you to want to eat more food. You're going to feel like a black hole and you're just going to keep eating. Don't do this. What I would recommend to people is if you want like a good breakfast when you wake up in the morning, go get some pancakes, go eat some eggs, an omelet, something like that. So that's going to satisfy that craving. Then understand that it is that hunger hormone that's telling you you need to eat. You don't actually need to eat that much food. Usually what I like to do is I say, go back to what your food was before peak week, because sometimes you do need to reduce down your food into peak week to tighten down. Sometimes make weight cap for you women out there. You guys don't have a weight cap for some of the male classes you do 
do have a weight cap. Right. Depending, sometimes you have to go to drastic things to make that weight cap. You don't have to really go back to those calories. You can probably go back to what was before peak week. Going into how to select your calories coming out of a show. For most people, they can't just immediately go back into maintenance. So if you started off prep and you were eating, I don't know, 4,000 calories a day, which for me, it would be probably five to 6,000 calories a day. I can't go from 2,500 calories a day to 6,000 calories a day and not expect to get bloated in my body to utilize all that food. Yeah, I'm going to put on a ton of water weight, but it's not gonna be muscular weight. A lot of people have these reverses. They're like, oh, I'm getting so big. No, you're retaining a lot of inflammation, a lot of water. You might be having blood pressure issues. You're probably circulating a lot of glucose and not converting it to glycogen because your body doesn't need that much. You're just eating a surplus for so long after eating in a deficit for so long. A good rule of thumb is about a 20% increase to your calories that you were going into your show. It's a good rough number for the majority of people. You start that on either a Monday or a Tuesday. Therefore, you got your little bit of freedom that most people mentally need. You want to give some type of mental relief is a big thing when it comes to competing. You get that mental relief and then you get back into a diet again. That's your calorie increase, right? So that's your first week coming out of it. Then the second week, if you're still kind of dropping weight or staying right around that same weight, increase your calories again. And again, it doesn't have to be a huge increase, but for some people, they need a bigger increase. Some people, they need to cognitively get back there so they don't lose their jobs. Give them some more food so they can function better so that they can start living their lives again. Everyone's going to be different. Again, some people are fine with the lower calories. That being said is throttle it based off of either the client or yourself and make sure that you can function again. It's not going to be an overnight thing. So don't just jam a bunch of food thinking that you're gonna start feeling better overnight. You actually will be feeling worse if you eat too much food too quickly. So take that reverse phase to really take advantage of growing some lean tissue. When you're doing that, if you got really dieted down and you were peeled out inside and out, ready for a national show, maybe even went pro, you're going to need probably a month to two months to really start feeling back to yourself again. It just is what it is. Your body, your brain chemistry, all that stuff changes. If you were natural and you're a male, even a female, your hormones are probably bottomed out. So even as a natural athlete, you need some type of post-cycle therapy to get your hormones back online. As a woman as well, if you were enhanced, you need to make sure to reduce that oxidative stress that you were going in. You also had a lot of stimulants in your system. Throttling down those stimulants to get your receptors, your adrenals back online again and healthy is one of the biggest mistakes that I see people make where they like continue to jam a bunch of caffeine in their system. Reduce this down and don't just completely cold turkey it, but reduce it down. Stimulants are addictive. Caffeine is addictive. Your body has become reliant on it. So reducing that down is extremely important, but don't cold turkey it. You're gonna have some withdrawals. Start to reduce that down into a normal range. If you were at 800 milligrams a day, which is a ton, but I know people get up to like 800 to 1000 milligrams a day of caffeine, which you can look at my video on stimulants, to see how to throttle stimulants a little bit better and more intelligently. You should probably reduce that, cut it in half immediately and go down to 400 milligrams a day, which is still a good amount of caffeine. That's a lot of caffeine in a day. And then maybe after two to three weeks, you reduce that down again in half and you're at 200 milligrams. And then in another two to three weeks, you cut it out and you let your body actually relax and detox off that those stimulants. The other thing, your thyroid, your metabolic rate has been reduced. If you are on androgens and there were orals involved, completely remove the orals, get your liver back in check, make sure your kidneys are filtering the blood properly, get ready to run some labs and go back on to either testosterone or placement dosages as a male, or you can reduce down your overall androgen dosages and just reduce down to just testosterone of some sort. You will wanna run labs after two weeks minimum. You're going to want things such as CRP run, which is C-reactive protein. This is an indicator actually for heart disease, but it also shows you how healthy your kidneys and your heart are. It can tell you if you're wasting muscle. There's a few different reads when it comes to it, but either way, that's one of the number one things that people do not normally test and I would definitely add it in after prep. If your score is high, you need to get it back down. But this is something that you should have been doing the entire time during prep, is to make sure that your heart and your kidneys are in check the entire time. Women, every woman needs a post-cycle therapy. Natural again, or enhanced. And why is that? Your hormones bottom out as well. 
your thyroid reduces down. You need to have a post-cycle therapy for your hormones. Even if you're only running Anivar, there are side effects when it comes to Anivar. And for your thyroid, if you are on thyroid medication for men and women, do not just automatically remove your thyroid medication, stay on your thyroid medication for a week, two weeks, then maybe come off it or stay on it for a month. It's going to be very bio-individual here. Now understand if you run labs and you are on something like a T3 and a T4, your TSH score will be zeroed out most likely due to the fact that you are replacing that hormone in your pituitary gland is no longer signaling to produce thyroid hormone because you're replacing it. Very similar to a male that takes testosterone replacement therapy, your luteinizing hormone and your FSH, which is produced in your testicles, gets shut down. So it turns off that access way, getting your hormones back online. There's a throttling technique with stimulants as well as thyroid medication to go about this process because it affects your BMR. You need to recirculate your kidneys. First off, get back on track with diet, get your car cardio back in check. You do not need to do if you're doing two hours of cardio a day, which is absurd anyways. Reduce that down to 45 minutes to an hour so you can reduce oxidative stress on the body, but you still need that cardio in there. Your diet's now back in check. You're at your 400 to 600 caloric surplus. Then that that's in check and we still have all this inflammation and it's, I call it water locking where the water is just locked up in the body and all this extra glucose and inflammation is in the body, you need to recirculate that water. So what's a good re way to recirculate water? Epsom salt baths are a great way. Magnesium is a great way. Vitamin C is a great way. Dandelion root. Another thing that is a great way is the sauna. 20 minutes in sauna goes a very, very long way and is very underrated for upregulating kidney functionality and recirculation. You need to start moving everything around. Do not continue to binge and eat all that free food through the week. That extra sodium that you're going to be ingesting is going to cause extra inflammation and more water to be held. Get back on track. It's going down.